This is Madden 19. I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. We are just moments away from what should be an excellent matchup between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. With that, let's get on up to Jacksonville. Danny by for the call. It's our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Sunshine State in TIAA Bank Field here in Jacksonville. This crowd excited to see their Jaguars as both teams emerge from their tunnels a moment ago. We are just about ready for football as the Jags get set to match up with the Los Angeles Chargers. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And before kickoff, Charles, quickly, your keys to the game. Well, partner, I could give you the standard ones, turnovers, special teams play. But here's one that doesn't get talked about much anymore, and that's time of possession. Whoever controls the football, gives their defense a break, and takes care of business, that's the team that's going to win this ball game. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here's the Charger offense making their way out. They'll be led out by their veteran quarterback out of North Carolina State. It's Phillip Rivers. One way you become the all-time leading passer for your team is pure talent, and Phillip Rivers has plenty of that. But there's also dedication to your craft and the willingness to get better all the time. Phillip Rivers has a van set up with a driver so that when he goes to and from practice, He's able to watch tape and find ways to improve his mechanics each and every day. Play fake to Gordon, now Rivers. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Yannick Ngakwe in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. And so much for that great field position to start the game. Now they're way behind the sticks. Can't wait to see what their second down call is going to look like now. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Set, 380. Hot. They'll run. This is Melvin Gordon. The limited running room as he'll get about three to the 21. And the offensive starters here for Los Angeles. I have to admit, I've rather enjoyed watching Melvin Gordon's improvement as he's developed as an NFL player because it started for me in college. Every year he was in school, he would add something extra to his game. First year, he knew how to run. He wanted to add pass receiving to his game. The next year, he wanted to add pass to his game. Did all of that, that turned him into a first-rounder, and now a front-line NFL back. They go play action. Rivers. And he'll be out right at the 35. Give him 15 yards on that one and a charger first down. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up the first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Gordon on first down. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. On first and 10, Rivers. 
And this is caught. First catch for Keenan Allen. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Rivers. Allen's got it over the middle. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. The Charger first down, Rivers hooking up with Allen. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball. And sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to float this one. Try to get it to Williams, but it's intercepted. Picked up by the former first round pick, D.J. Hayden. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. is Leonard Fournette, and he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. And that run, that changes the whole mentality about the drive right there. They were starting on their own two-yard line. They just wanted enough space to punt the football successfully. Now they're talking about putting together a drive. On the ground, this is T.J. Yeldon, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. Defense able to get there, swarm to the football. Zilch, zero, nada there for the offense, Charles. Yeah, it really was an example of good team defense, wasn't it? Everyone handled their responsibilities, and they held them to no gain. Fake to Fournette, now it's Bortles to throw. Rolling to his right. Joey Bosa in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. Now this is where field awareness comes into play. He's getting perilously close to his own goal line, and after that sack, backed up to his own two. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. That's pulled in at the 32. A nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. The Chargers getting set to go. That opening drive ended with the INT. It didn't lead to points, but still not the way they were hoping to begin the game. But how about going and telling your defense, thank you, a huge thank you. You said it didn't lead to points, stalled off that drive. Now they've got a chance to redeem themselves, maybe reward their defense a little bit by putting some points on the board on this one. 
So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. They'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. Man, it wasn't that long ago that the guy playing that spot was an outside linebacker type of a guy. Now, as a defensive end, how about the speed that he used to get into the backfield and make the play? The opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. On second down, they'll run with Gordon, and he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Two yards gets them back to where they started, but now third and 10. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout this season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well, and they don't permit big plays to happen. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. It's caught on the right side, Williams. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. So on fourth down, here's the veteran left-footed punter Donnie Jones to kick it away. Back deep, Jadon Mickens. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at the 20. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And not too much going there as he'll get it up to the 23-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Now second and seven from the 23. Now Bortles throwing on second down. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Green 80. Throwing now is Bortles. They go with the screen. It's Yeldon. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. A short gain there of just four. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. It, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. The Chargers offense gets set. They head back onto the field. And things haven't started so well for this side. Two drives, two punts. So now you've got to start looking not just at play calling, 
But which guy's going to step forward and say, okay, let's get this thing done? Because within that unit of 11, sometimes one guy can make a big-time play and break through the barrier. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Rivers going to turn and give this one to his running back, Gordon. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber who runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. On the counter, here's Gordon. And an alley to run. Space to maneuver at the 40. And brought down across the 50 to the 49-yard line. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. Dance class, anyone? <laughs> Did you see the steps between the quarterback and the running That's back? That's you on need that for a good play? counter. You have to have it because you're setting up your blocking. There's a timing element as well, but they have to marry up their steps. Otherwise, that timing gets thrown out the window. Timing was great there and a big run. So following the run by Gordon, here's first and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And a pretty big hole as he's down to about the 40. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going, and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Give him 15 yards on that one and a charger first down. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. Right back to him on first down. Down to the 25. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Back-to-back one-yard runs here, so that leaves him with a third down and eight. now Rivers going for it all he finds his receiver Williams for a charger touchdown as his guys are in for six and the Chargers have taken a first quarter lead and partner they found a gap there on the post pattern and it was in the middle third of the field and that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening but they found the opening and exploited it Extra point forthcoming. Extra point splits the uprights, and it's now a 7-0 game. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told, and it ends with the Chargers getting into the end zone.
Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be fielded at the six. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at the 31-yard line. Set, green 80. Green Play action. Now it's Bortles. This is Yeldon on the dump off. No gain, and it's second down. That was impressive to me because while it was a pass play, they still rallied to the football like they were filling running lanes and they were able to put the receiver on the ground. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. And Brandon, every running back wants to use their speed in order to get out in front of things. Sometimes you just have to be patient, let blocks develop. On that play, that didn't happen. An extra defensive back on the field for the Chargers now on third down. Green 80, green 80. Throwing his Bortles on third down. And the third down pass falls incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he's on here to punt it away. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. The Chargers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at the 20. The first down throw here for Rivers. And that's complete to the right side. It's Allen. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 15 yards is the pick up there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They go play action here on first down. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Dewan Smoot in there to sack him for a loss of six. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit.
Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Now Rivers going to give it off to Gordon. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. Nothing there, no gain, and now they're looking at a third and 15. Well, they know how to protect the pass, but sometimes cornerbacks, they can also stop the run, can't they? Is that what we call a complete corner? Yeah, because we're so used to these guys just being defenders in the pass game. How about the guys who can come up and make the tackles? That's what we just saw there for no gain, too. Third and long for Rivers. And this is going to be incomplete. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. Yeah, this is taken at the 23. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. The Jaguars offense now heads back onto the field. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes, if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Throwing his Bortles. Left side complete, Safarian Jenkins. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. First down carry. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. The Pro Bowl corner, Jason Barrett on the tackle. Second down, here's Bortles. And his throw here is incomplete. The Jaguars on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and seven. Shotgun now for Bortles. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. And the Jaguars send out their punter. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Now the Chargers offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their own 15. On 
on play action. Rivers. And he'll be wrapped up around the waist and pushed down. Calais Campbell in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. And that is the third sack this offensive line has allowed this first quarter. Man, that puts him on pace. Let me do the rudimentary math here. To be sacked 12 times in a game, I know he's not going to go for that. I wonder if it's going to reshape what they decide to do on offense in terms of play calling. Well, I can tell you what, when he popped up, shaking his head, frustrated right now behind center. And the job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. Now a handoff. This is Gordon. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. He'll get three, but it leaves him with a big hole here on third and very long. Nice job there defensively on third down. Not only did they string the play out, but they didn't allow any room for a cutback. Really well organized on the defensive side. Chargers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 17. Play fake. Rivers. And now he's taken down. And Rivers in the end zone. Down to the ground he goes. That results in a safety in two points. And you know the man who sat in my chair the last few years, he has a theory. These plays, these safeties, they're so rare. Maybe they should be worth more than two, maybe four points. I think he's got a great point. I really do, Brandon. But I would go ahead and up it to six. I'm a former defender. Ooh. To me, that's like scoring a touchdown. Easy now. I'll go four. I don't know about six. Come on, come on. Come up to six. <laughs> a lot of points. And remember, following the safety, you give the football up as well. And they free kick it from the 20 now. This will be taken at the 10. And he will be taken down here as the first quarter of play will come to an end. One quarter in the books. 7-2 to two is our score. More from Jacksonville after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back here with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. We've had the kickoff to begin the first quarter. Now it's time for the second quarter kickoff as they take over following the punt with a first and 10. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Bortles now on first down. And complete over the middle, Safarian Jenkins. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Portals on the give to Fournette. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. If you're the coaching staff upstairs, you might want to file that play away. Do you see how fast the safety closed on that one? Coming up in run support, made a big-time tackle. Might want to try and check into a pass next time. Yeah, got him for a loss. Really, really great play defensively. Green A. 
Brady. Bortles to throw on second down. Looking sideline incomplete. Marquise Lee, the intended target. Third down here. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. From the gun on third down, Bortles. And that is incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and that just continued there with that incompletion. And definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. And the Jaguars send out their punter. Chargers coming hard, and they block it. Uh, so much for pinning him really deep. Short punt could have pinned him inside the 10. Now great field position the other way. It's never good when you're punting the ball and your eyes see the ball go back behind you. <laughs> no. In however form, whether it's over your head or to the side, never good. Now it becomes a race to get to the football so they don't pick it up and take it all the way. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Ready, 380. Ah! Now a 10th carry for Melvin Gordon. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20 yard line it's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains how about that there no frills no additives right nothing crazy just find a way to pick up the first down a nice run right there a first red zone opportunity here for the chargers first and 10 right at the 20. They'll run it now out of the guns. And all the way down inside the five to the four. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills? And it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty. Can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. And that led to a really nice game. First and goal, Melvin Gordon. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Give him three on the game there, second and goal. It is definitely hard to find space near the goal line. You always want to have a guy in the game running it who can create his own. Second and goal from the one. They'll try to throw here. Rivers, and his throw is incomplete. Keenan Allen, the intended target, and it's third and short. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah, what happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. 
And a loss of three to bring up Ford. They might think about going for it here, but it's still just the second quarter. Take the three points, tell the defense you believe in them, and let them get the ball back for you. The Chargers will bring out the field goal unit now. This will be just a 21-yard attempt. And this one is right through. And that'll push the lead up to eight. So put three on the board, but you know, from that far into enemy territory, probably hoping for more. Yeah, I think they're going to get together on the sideline, talk about it, right? Because you get that far, that deep, you want to come away with a touchdown. They'll take the three, but they're going to follow the way for the future. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. leads the Jags up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They begin with a run by Fournette. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Play action. It's Bortles. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for James O'Shaughnessy as tight end. And it's second down. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Green 80. Bortles will try again on second down. He goes underneath for Yeldon. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Give him two yards on that play. And that's going to bring up a third down. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Green 80. From the gun, it's Bortles. Looking long for Westbrook. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Yeah. 
After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Again, they'll throw with Bortles. And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. This Fournette territory here, and he's alone in the backfield on second and goal. They'll try to punch it in with Fournette. And he'll take this into the end zone. A touchdown, Jacksonville. A great effort there. Taking it in. And the Jaguars move back within a couple of the lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Josh Lambeau now for the point after. Extra point tacked on by Lambeau. And this is now a one-point game. A drive that time of six plays. And it culminates in a Jags touchdown. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. Here's Desmond King on the return. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Here now a look at Melvin Gordon. He's in his own second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has, and that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a thousand yard mark. I'm wondering since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games, maybe we need to up that a little. He'll start on the ground. This is Gordon on first down. And he'll get about three as he takes this up near the 25. This is Gordon. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. It'll go as a gain of 11 at a Charger first. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. So from the 36 now, first and 10. The busy night continues for Gordon as he gets it here. Looking for an opening, not much there. He'll get it to the 39. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Here's Gordon. 
And now running right through it. And he'll get this way down into Jacksonville territory. A big play there by Gordon. 44 yards. Terrific run from one of the fastest backs in the game today. A guy who keeps defensive coordinators up at night, no doubt. Remember when we were meeting with the D coordinator before the game and all he talked about was run fits, making sure our guys were in the right place so there were no creases? They missed their fits, didn't they? Yeah, there was no fit there. The only fit was at the end when he threw his headset down after that big run. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Good. Good. 180. Good. From the red zone now, Rivers. That's complete right around the eight. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run. Big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Rivers. And this is hauled in by Williams for a Charger touchdown. Tyrell Williams, a one-yard touchdown reception. And the Chargers find a way to stretch their lead. So they lob it up on the fade, and really a great play to go up and make that catch. It's something that takes some timing, and people work on it all the time. Even when they're just warming up, you know that old pat and go when they're just warming up throwing the football? A lot of the time it turns into that route exactly. A fade route, and this one turned into a touchdown. Now for the point after. Extra point right down the middle. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. That time, a six-play drive. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. To throw, it's Bortles. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. Green 80, green 80. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. Safarian Jenkins has it. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. A good pick up there of 20 yards. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Bortles. 
Bengals now just 8 of 16 thus far, 50%, but it's first and 10. Now Bortles, looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. A fake to Fournette, now it's Bortles to throw. And a diving grab, I think he got that, yes. First down, Jacksonville, the passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. And not all spectacular catches are the result of a pass that maybe was not thrown quite right. Sometimes it's thrown in the perfect spot and you have to just go get it. And he did that right there. No fear there in the middle of the field. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. False start, offense. So that one will be accepted. Still first down. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. Green 80. Green 80. After the penalty, it's Fournette. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Corey Liggett makes the stop. Brandon, you're a big lover of music. How about what you just saw there? This is what I call playing the piano for a defensive lineman, the ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage. How about the way he just flowed and got to the outside part of the field and made that play? Hey, 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 set, green eight. Now Bortles throwing on second down. Eluding the pressure right. <laughs> And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. Partner, as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. Full start, offense. Still first down. The full start backs him up five, first and 15. Green now a play fake here on first down. Rush coming and he's taken down. Melvin Ingram in there to get him for a loss of five. Well, this has been a pretty sizable drive. They've had some success. Finally, the defensive coordinator found some success of his own. I think he just simply said enough of that. Okay, they've moved the ball well. We need to force the issue from our end, and that's exactly what he did. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Bortles now to throw, and his throw is going to be incomplete. It's been my observation, there's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. 
You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Green 80, green 80. On third and long, it's Bortles. This is Yeldon on the dump off. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. It's a gain of nine yards, and that'll bring up fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And Lambeau will put this one through, and that'll get the lead down to five. So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point, or in this case, a field goal. After the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. Now Austin Eckler on the return. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Melvin Gordon now, he and the offense, they trot back out there. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep well, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. First down, Rivers. Over the middle, he's got Tyrell Williams. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. He'll get three up to midfield. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. Now Rivers going to give to Gordon on the draw. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. Calais Campbell on the stop. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back with more from Jacksonville. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coaches' two-minute drill. The Chargers on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This will be third and five. Rivers to throw it. Sets up the screen to Gordon. 
And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. on first down and this is complete it's Allen and he takes it in for a Charger touchdown Phillip Rivers with his third touchdown pass of the game and the Chargers are going to add on to their lead I think if you pulled defensive backs they would say the corner route take that out make it illegal because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field and that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner but then as the wide receiver great job it's tough to turn those upfield and go but he did a great job with it there really good balance really good body control and how about the end result a touchdown now the try here for the extra point Point after, right down the middle. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends with the Chargers getting into the end zone. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Leonard Fournette making his way back out there. He's just been looking for some space. You know, I'm not going to pin it on him or the offensive line, but they need to get this run game going better. Sometimes you just have to credit the defense. They came in with a plan themselves. So I think now you try and mix things up a little bit. Get the ball in the hands of some other people, find some other playmakers, but always let the defense believe that he's still a threat. I was going to say, don't forget about it. No, him. don't take him totally out of the game. On first down, Bortles. And he fires one that's intercepted. Desmond King picks it. And he will score. Touchdown, L.A. Well, partner, I do know this. If you're a defensive back, you have more chances to make a team now than ever because people are using five defensive back, six defensive back packages. Not exclusively, but way more than before. That was a nickel package there, and what a pickoff. Why is that? Why are they using that more? Because more people are throwing the ball on earlier downs than ever before. This has become a passing league, and because of that, more defensive backs on the field on most plays. Now the try here for the point after. Extra point splits the uprights, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown.
So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out come the Jags. And they just had that pick six. I guess the only positive may be them returning that for a touchdown. This offense right back out onto the field to try to make up for it. I like that because now it doesn't give them a chance to go to the bench and really settle. You know, to sit there and kind of seethe over the idea that they turned the ball over previously. Right back out there. It's almost like hopping right back on the bike after falling over. See if they can get the ball moving again. Yeah, we'll see if they can do it here. Green 80. Now Bortles to try again after the pick six. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Jaleel Ladai. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. That's sort of a second quarter to forget for him. Now two picks in this frame. Almost as if the first one that he threw, he couldn't shake, couldn't get it out of his head. He ends up throwing a second one as a result. Compounds the mistake a little bit. Yeah, you got to be able to forget, compartmentalize, whatever you want to call it, and move on. He hasn't been able to do so here in the second. Here now, a look at Melvin Gordon. Might he be on his way to a record-setting performance here, Charles? Second quarter and the yardage number already ridiculous. And they always talk about just focusing on the next play. But sometimes it's okay to dream big yeah. because they... I'm focusing on the fourth quarter already. I... <laughs> Listen, I don't blame you, though, because we could be witnessing some type of history here, and it's being done by him and, of course, the big guys up front who are creating the holes for him to run through. Yeah, they've all been good so far. Delta! Hey, Following the interception here, Rivers. Man open left side, it's Williams. Give him 15 yards on that one and a charger first down. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Rivers now. 12 of 15 throwing the ball, 80% so far, and it's first and 10. Rivers now to throw on first down. His pass caught at the four. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. They'll try and punch it in. Gordon, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. Melvin Gordon taking it in from two yards out, and the Chargers find a way to stretch their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late-in-the-half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Extra point attempt to come here. Extra point right down the middle. And the route is on here in this first half. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it's capped off by a touchdown run coming from Melvin Gordon.
Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Jaguars getting set to go. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On first and 10, here's Bortles. He'll get this over to Westbrook, it's complete. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation down. post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. down. They go with the screen. It's Yeldon. Takes this to the 32, maybe the 31. Defensively rallying to the ball after the nice move. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Shotgun now for Bortles. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Well, it's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. The Jaguars on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. Here it's third and two. Green 80. They'll try to run for it with Yeldon. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. And now the Chargers are going to look up here and signal for a timeout. As they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense.
And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. They'll put it down right at the 40, so call this a 50-yard attempt. And Lambeau will put this one through, and that'll put us within three scores as it becomes now a 23-point game. So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, Coach is always talking about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point or, in this case, a field goal. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. Here's Eckler to return it. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Phillip Rivers now gears up to lead the offense on the field. He's been in a pretty good groove. They actually have more yards on the ground than through the air, but both have been good, pretty balanced. And have we ever met a coach when we've talked to him before a game that hasn't mentioned wanting to be balanced? No, because then you've got both sides hitting the defense. They don't know what to expect, right? It really helps your play calling because now you're in a position where you're confident in either one, either aspect of the game, dial it up and let it go. And so far, that's allowed them to lead. Absolutely. Have the lead here in the second quarter. On first and ten, Rivers. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. So we have reached halftime. Intermission with the visiting Chargers on top. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach and our EA Sports halftime report. In the game you're watching, it's the veteran Philip Rivers who's up to his old tricks. He's thrown for close to 200 yards already, and that's helped propel his guys into the lead as we send you back to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This fielded at the two. Now a hit and a loose football. And picked up by the Chargers. And this is going to be a Charger touchdown. A big play there. Taking it in. And this Charger offense is running away with this one. So they get the one score, kick off, get a fumble, take it right back to the house. <laughs> Two quick touchdowns within a matter of about 10 seconds on the game clock. It's like a big one-two punch that may lead to a knockout. Now the extra point try forthcoming. 
point after, right down the middle. And that will extend this big lead. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This is taken at his four. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Throwing now is Bortles. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That throw good for four. It's second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. Ball start, offense. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. A handoff to Fournette. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Four yards on the pick up there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. Well, they certainly haven't been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defensive front. They got just pin their ears back and get after them now. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Cole, and he'll get up to the 43-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they could make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from the first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And the Jaguars send out their punter. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Hey, how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. A first down throw here for Rivers. Trying to get it to Williams, but it's intercepted. A.J. Boye with a pick, and the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Oh, man, Brandon, not a real good throw that time. It looked like he tried to put a little too much air under this one, and it turned into a floater. And defensively, this is a dream. He could have fair caught that one. That was way too easy. Here comes the 
Jaguars offense as they get set here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. So after the INT, it's Bortles. Caught, Safarian Jenkins, right side. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Throwing on first down is Bortles. The open man is Westbrook. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. To back good plays have them on the move on first down. Green 80. Green 80. Green. Bortles now on first down. Safarian Jenkins has it. And he's able to work it here to the eight yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Catch short of the marker by just a yard. Leaves him with a very manageable second and one. A fake to Fournette. Now it's Bortles to throw. And oh, not only did he drop it, he dropped it in the end zone. When you got your backs in the shadow of your goal line, you've got to be physical in that situation because there's not a whole lot of space, not a lot of wild plays that can be run there. That's put up or shut up time defensively. Nice job just to make sure they didn't complete it on that play. They tried to the throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Again, they'll throw with Bortles. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. On third and one, I think everyone in the stadium thought they'd try and run the football there, but they tried to surprise the defense and hit something through the air. Instead, it results in an incompletion. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Lambo will put this one through. And they'll make a small dent in that big deficit as it's down to 27. I'm kind of surprised by that, that they kicked the field goal. I guess you get some points, but this deficit third quarter, I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. When you're down that much, kicking a field goal, does it feel a little bit maybe waving the white flag the way, and just, just want to get that. out of here? Yeah, I, I think you got to go ahead and try and get some bigger points on the board. After the main field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. 
I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback <laughs> some confidence. See what happens. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. play got just a yard here second and nine from the 26. Hey. Hey, Black 15. Now a second down throw for Rivers. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a charger first. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. So the ref takes a peek here, wants to see if the receiver had possession and both feet inbounds. If this were a college game, this would be a legal catch. It's the second foot that they're looking at to make sure it gets down. Cap cap two inbounds in the NFL. Challenged the play, it did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player, you threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the play or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident, and then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. Four down, four down. Check ring 90. Ready? Now a handoff. This is Gordon going left. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. He's had a big game tonight, and while no one's going to be overly concerned about that last play, you also know that the offense coordinator does not want to see that happen again. They want to get back to doing what they've been doing all game long. They keep it on the ground again, Gordon. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. There for the tackle, the former Wisconsin Badger, Leon Jacobs. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. The Chargers on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This is third and seven. Set. 380. And hot. Working out of the gun, Rivers. Got a man, it's complete, Williams. And he's in for a Charger touchdown. A fourth touchdown pass there for Phillip Rivers. And this Chargers offense continues to pour it on. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers. That meant fly route, go. Uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Yeah. 
Extra point attempt to follow here. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead will swell by one more. So that drive spanned five plays, and it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at their own 26. Green 80. Green 80. Trying to get the run game going. This is Fournette. A spin. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. He'll be brought down at the 43. Joey Bosa in on the stop. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Hey, 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 hey. Green 80. Green 80. Bortles going to run the draw with Fournette. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Offensive linemen are famous for doing their job no matter who's carrying the ball. But when they have the confidence that the person carrying it can break off big-time runs, that makes them block just a little bit harder. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Bortles now to throw, and almost intercepted. It would have been his second pick of the game. Instead, it'll be second down. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So line of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10. We got four. Green 80. Green 80. Green 80. On second down, here's Fournette. And he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage with a penalty flag down. This might push him back further. Holding offense. So he was holding from that left tackle position. Everyone tries to keep their hands inside when they're blocking ever since they liberalized the rules where you can extend them out. But sometimes they get out a little wide and they get detected grabbing some cloth. Now after the holding call, here's second and 20. After the penalty, it's yelled at. That he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff.
Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Green 80. Green 80. From the gun, it's Bortles. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Are we on the same page here, partner? Because I think they had the right idea. Just take what you can get on third and forever. Yeah, in real life, I'd say yes. It's just these video games are tempting. You want to go downfield with it. I like the way you evolved. Yeah. You know, you've learned how to play it the Madden way. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Melvin Gordon now, he and the offense, they trot back out there. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went in at halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half, it gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at the 20. The handoff goes to Gordon, running left. And he'll get this up only to about the 22. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. You know how we get focused at end of the half and end of the game situations about how much time's on the board and, you know, what you need to do? Sometimes you don't even have to worry about that. That's just smart football. You know, that kind of a lead, staying in bounds, it burns clock, even in a situation that we're not really focused on it. Second down, Rivers, and incomplete on the deep ball. But one thing's for sure, they're still taking their shots downfield, even with a big lead. No, I think it's way too early to go into a shell, so I like what they're doing. Continue to take your shots, continue to be aggressive. It's not their job to slow themselves down. The Chargers on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and eight. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Give him 12 yards there, and the Chargers have a first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. They go play action here on first down. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Yannick Ngakwe in there to drop it for his second sack now here tonight. And that's the second sack of the game, but this player disruptive in all phases, whether he's going upfield, coming underneath, you name it. He's a big-time guy you have to block. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. They run it here with Gordon. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. The Chargers on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This is third and 17. From the gun, Rivers. Open man, it's Allen. Rivers to Allen on the hook up there. 52 yards. Back in the first quarter, you said it. They need to avoid the big play, but he just got a big one right there. You can't relax. You know, we talked about in the first quarter, but as the game progresses, still opportunities, and he took advantage of one there.
So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. They'll run it now out of the gun. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So they go out of the gun, try to delay it on the draw, but nothing there. Yeah, good play by the defense there. They sniffed it out and made sure there were no gaps for him to run. If you're the offense, though, you have to think to yourself, maybe I go play action down the road. And on the ground they go with the running back. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. Nine yards on the pick up there as he'll be left with third and one. The defense is bound to fit a long time now. And after a run like that, they've got to feel like they're almost on roller skates and getting pushed backwards on just about every snap. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. They'll try and run it. Here's Gordon. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the nine yard line. And they got three yards. That's enough. A conversion, and now it's first and goal. Well, someone's been having a good game so far. And you know something? A lot has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Four down, four down. Delta! They'll try to throw here, Rivers. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Antonio Gates, the veteran tight end, was the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle. And a nice pick up there. He gets about five down to the four-yard line. But a spotlight hit him once already tonight as he got into the end zone. He was trying to make it a double spotlight, wasn't he? But credit the defense, bottling him up, not letting him get in for the second score there. The Chargers on third down. Well, they've converted seven times and could use another right now. They're looking at a third and goal here. Operating from the gun, Rivers. And Gates has got it. And the Chargers all-time touchdown leader has another one. Antonio Gates from four yards out. And this Charger offense is running away with this one. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. A try here for the extra point. And oh, it's blocked. plays in length and it ends with the Chargers getting into the end zone the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded at the two. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line right around the 36. 
Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional <laughs> side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. On first down, Bortles. Left side complete, Safarian Jenkins. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Green 80. Green 80. Green 80. Working from the gun. It's Bortles. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, You've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Green 80. Green 80. Portal's going to try and throw on third down. Open man is Westbrook complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. Scrimmage the 37 on first and 10. Here's a give to Fournette. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Second down, here's Bortles. They'll get this over to Westbrook. It's complete. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Seven catches for him now in this last one. A first down. counter and he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter three quarters in the books we'll return with more after this you're watching the nfl on ea sports back now in jacksonville and this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter a very one-sided affair of respectability.
Lambo to add on the extra point. Point after by Lambo up and good as they make the score just a slight bit more respectable here in the final quarter of play. So this drive spans seven plays, and it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. Here's Eckler to return it. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here comes the Chargers offense now back out onto the field. The outcome of this one... Well, we know who's going to win it. It's just all window dressing at this point. Got me thinking, what's what's the biggest blowout that you've been a part of as a player, broadcaster? Well, I'm not going to go to the player part because when I think blowout... Because you won every game as a player. No, no, no. I think about being blown out. <laughs> and no one wants to go back to those memories. But, you know, when I was calling college football, I saw a game that... You know, team put 70. I actually saw that happen twice. A team put 70 on their opponent. And in the NFL in the 2017 season, I saw one of those changing of the guard games where a team that hadn't been very good before now is dominating and kicking around a team who had been ruling their division. And that's when you earn your paycheck, right? As the, as the analyst, you got to fill that time. You've got to know what's going on out there and how it all happened. Well, obviously, that begs the question. What game was it? That was Seattle hosting Los Angeles, the Rams. Ah, yeah. Their second meeting of the season, and the Rams turned it around from the first one and blew out the Seahawks. This is Gordon as they go to him again. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. On third down, this is Melvin Gordon. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. I think this defense tired of seeing him run the football. This D-line probably getting sick of the O-line as well. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason. He told me that he asked his running backs, each week for their favorite runs. Give me your three top runs. And right now, you're seeing a guy that's probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in a zone. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now Gordon on first down. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Finally, defensively, they have a little clip to show positive for actually stopping him running the football. It's been a really long night for them, hasn't it? So they got a little bit of a win there, but let's face it. The vision that he's had running the football has carried his feet to the open spaces and to big yardage all night long. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And it's a fumble. And did the Jaguars come up with it? They did. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of 
what the offensive guy didn't do. Didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. The Jaguars' offense now heads back onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Bortles gives to Yeldon on the draw. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Again, it's Yeldon. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Gun on third down, Bortles. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. So out comes the field goal team once more. From the right hash, this from 53. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Getting set to go again here on offense, Keenan Allen marches back onto the field. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their own 43. Set! 380! Set! He'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. Powerful running. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. On second down, they'll run with Gordon. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Telvin Smith that time there to make the play. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. On third down, that's Gordon. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Here's Donnie Jones now. 
as he's on to punt for L.A. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. leads the Jags up first and 10 at their 38. Three down, three down. To throw is Bortles. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Derwin James with a pick. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six and a Charger TD. Defensively, they've had their way in this one. That pick six makes that scoreboard even more lopsided. I remember talking with a guy in the league, and I said, what do you do when the game's like this? You know, it's pretty much over. You ready to go to the bench and hang out? He said, oh, heck no. I want to stay on the field. I might get some stats. I might get a pick or two. <laughs> you like being out there at the end of these wide margins. When they have to throw it, that gives you more opportunities to go get it. Out comes the kicking team here for the extra point. Extra point right down the middle, and that will extend this big lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. leads the Jags up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now Bortles to try again after the pick six. Escapes the sack. Escaping the pressure right. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. Looks to me, partner, like he's learned a little bit because earlier in the game, I think he was trying to force a lot of throws into some windows that just weren't open. Yeah, the interceptions had plagued him, especially a second interception, really a bad throw. So maybe a better decision there. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think he learned from earlier in the game, and he's applying it now. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Bortles now on first down. His throw incomplete. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. To the air on second down. It's Bortles. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The intended target, the tight end, Austin Safarian Jenkins. And that takes us from second to third down. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. We got four. Set. Green 80. 
They'll run it now, out of the gun. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. He loses four, and it brings up fourth. Well, they were going draw play there. The defense wasn't fooled. They sniffed it out. I think they're going to have to go back and take a few more acting classes because that's what a lot of that is. You've got to influence them to think that it's going to be a pass play and have them drop out and maybe the defensive front coming forward and find yourself some space. In this case, no one was fooled and ended up spilling that play pretty well. This is taken at the 15. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. We've got a lopsided game here. I, I don't know, Charles, what does the handbook say that we, we discuss when we've got a game like this in the fourth quarter? Hold on a second, let me, let me thumb to the proper page on that. Know what it says? What? Let's discuss how we got here. This is a dominant performance where they took control of this game how they've managed to keep control of this game. And then we go ahead and think about how we're going to leave here and get to the airport. <laughs> In a lopsided blowout, the roads are usually open. On the counter, here's Gordon. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with the lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that plus three. Play fake to Gordon, now Rivers. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Calais Campbell in there to drop him the seventh time tonight, he's gone down. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. So it's third and long for the Chargers and Rivers after the sack. Set, 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 set. Rivers going to turn and give this one to his running back, Gordon. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. Here's Donnie Jones now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. now as they get set to take over. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again, so it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Start out on the ground, it's Leonard Fournette. And he'll get him a little bit of breathing room across the five to the six yard line. Casey Hayward makes the tackle. Now Bortles throwing on second down. Throw left side complete. That's Cole. 
And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. Bortles to Cole for the Jacksonville first. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So a little more space to operate now. First and 10 from right around the 12. Green 80, green 80. Green On first and 10, here's Bortles. He goes underneath for Yeldon. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. He's having a nice game through the air. His decision-making's been really good, solid there again, just seeing nothing downfield goes underneath, nice game. How about the patience? Because when you're having a big game through the air, you're looking for those chunk plays, those big ones downfield. Instead, as you noted, takes the check down, dumps it off, gains good yardage anyway. Really well executed. Portals to throw on second down. They go with the screen, it's Yeldon. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Green 80. A first down carry now for Yeldon. And an alley to run. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 11 more on that one and another first down. Well, so much for him being bottled up throughout the day. Finally finds a way to break through and get a really nice gain. The defense had felt great about what they had going. Now they've got to turn their attention to getting it back in that direction. Can they bottle him up again? Because I'd say after that run, confidence is pretty high for him. A couple of first downs has the football position at the 43 as they come up first and 10. Now Bortles. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. Well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Green 80. Green 80. Shotgun now for Bortles. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off by Casey Hayward. And he will score. Touchdown, L.A. And on that one, with six defensive backs, did he need to be more careful throwing the football? I mean, I guess obviously in hindsight he did, but... <laughs> yeah, hindsight, but even in foresight, when you get six defensive backs on the field, you just know you're going to get multiple coverages. You're never sure what you're going to see. But the biggest one is you don't have much reaction time for your receivers to go get the football because those guys, they're the best cover guys on the field. They go get it. And on that play, they took it the other way for six points. Point after try, forthcoming. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead will swell by one more. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception. 
navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Chargers defense now getting set and taking the field. leads the Jags up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 380. They begin with a run by Fournette. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore for sure. how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. Excellent field position after the face mask penalty. First and 10 out near midfield. Green 80. Bortles. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Green 80. Now Bortles. That's incomplete. Nearly another pick. My goodness. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. And the Chargers coming out of the field now. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Hey, 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 hey. Set. They'll start on the ground. This is Gordon on first down. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. 
Like any team, they would have loved to have had more yards on that run, but it looks like they just want to get to the two-minute warning and see what they want to do after that. Line of scrimmage is the eight on second and eight. Time for a break. Back to finish it off on EA Sports after this. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. Now Rivers going to give it off to Gordon. And he's going to be taken down here at about the 10. Just a couple on the ground there, and that's going to bring up third and about six. say the secondary play whichever side you're on hasn't really been a glowing exhibition so far but a nice job there to prevent a long completion I agree with you but at some point someone had to make a play and try and stop this exhibition of almost speed racing that we've been watching huh yeah it has been quarterback and receiver dominated here's Donnie Jones now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night and this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. It's taken to the 26. They'll call that a 61-yard punt. He got all of that one. And out will come the offense as they take over. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? For a lot of coaches, be honest. Don't forget today. <laughs> Don't forget what has happened out here. Yeah, use that as ammo exactly. going forward. Exactly. Take a great look at that scoreboard. Realize how poorly everything went for us today. Coaching, playing, the whole deal. And never forget it because... You're not going to want that feeling no, again. No, you don't want that feeling again. And who knows? You may meet up with this team again. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Bortles now on first down. Looking left side, he's got it complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. They'll run it now, out of the gun. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. will be incomplete one second left to go now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down Green 80. one final shot they'll look to throw and that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to victory. And 
the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points, allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Jacksonville, good night, everybody.